and welcome to today's webinar hosted by Cypher, Choosing and Implementing a New HR System, What's Involved? I'm Catherine, I'm Cypher's Head of Content. Joining me today are Laurie Mahmood, Head of Implementation Services here at Cypher, and Account Development Manager, Katie Reese. Welcome, Laurie and Katie, it's great to have you with us today. Hi, thanks for having us. Hi, Catherine. Hey, um, Laurie, would you mind just introducing yourselves to everyone who may not have met you before? Sure. Hi everybody, my name is Laurie. I am the Head of Implementation Services here at Cypher. Um, I am responsible for the implementation of our HR recruitment and payroll software. Um, been at Cypher for just over four years now. Um, HR professional um, by profession, um, sort of fell into this industry, um, implemented a HR system myself, fell in love with how technology transformed the way that me and my team worked. Um, so yeah, here at Cypher now heading up the implementation teams. Fantastic, thank you. And Katie, you've joined us for a few webinars before, but some of our audience might not have met you. So um, could you give us a little bit about what you're up to? Um, so hi everyone, I'm Katie. Uh, as mentioned, I'm an account development manager at Cypher. Um, I've been here now oh, God, almost six years, um, but I've, I've worked with hundreds of companies as they go through this journey and hopefully I can help you today with that. Um, prior to Cypher, my background has always been within the HR and payroll sector since leaving school, so various different jobs. Okay, fantastic. So we've got a wealth of experience here among our experts for you today. I'm um, just going to kick off and share our agenda. Uh, we're going to start by looking at how to make a selection a success. So Katie's going to talk us through the nuts and bolts of that, who to involve, how to pull together your goals and your requirements list, um, and what's involved with dealing with vendors. And then we're going to hand over to Laurie, who's going to talk us through how we implement Cypher's HR systems, the key stages and tasks involved in that project, what you might expect from a vendor in terms of support, um, and how to engage your end users with your new HR software. And then at the end, we'll have a nice summary of all that because we've got a lot to get through today um, and there's a question and answer at the end. So if you have any questions throughout um, for Katie or Laurie, please just drop them into the questions box and we'll get to those at the end. If you haven't come across Cypher before, we're a specialist provider of HR payroll recruitment and learning software through our HCM platform, Cypher Connect. Our solutions are used by more than 600 organisations across the UK in a wide variety of sectors. If you want to find out more about any of our products or solutions, you can visit our website, that's cypher.com, or email us at info at cypher.com. Okay, to kick off today, we've got um, a quick poll just to see what the experience level is among our audience. So, have you selected and implemented HR software before? Um, yes, you've been involved in selection process before. Yes, you've been involved in implementation before. Yes, you have experience of both selection and implementation or no, this is all new to me. So just choose one of the options there and we'll get a gauge of um, where our audience is at today. So Katie, you mentioned in your nearly six years of Cypher, you've dealt with hundreds of organizations. What's the typical um, experience level of the people you talk to around selection and implementation? Oh, but there is no typical. Um, I deal with people who haven't even used an uh, HR system, let alone implemented ones before. I've got ones that are using legacy, legacy systems. Um, we've got, whereas I can also work with people who, who all they do is implement systems and then flitter from company to company. So it is absolutely varied and hopefully I'll kind of touch on each of those kind of levels of people as we go through today. Okay, lovely. Thanks for that. Um, thank you all for voting. Uh, some really interesting results here. So uh, two fifths of you, 42% say this is all new to you. So welcome. We hope you'll have um, a lot more information once we get to the end of this hour. A third of you have experience of both selection and implementation um, and about 10% have experienced one or the other aspect of the system project. So that's great. I'm going to hand over to Katie now, who's going to talk us through how to make selection a success. Cool. Well, thank you so much, um, Catherine. Uh, as mentioned, I'll be taking you through a few points that, from my experience, you need to consider as part of this journey. So if you think HR and people teams aren't normally buyers uh, within a business, so this can be completely new to you guys. Even if you've implemented systems before, you may not have gone through your internal procurement steps and requirements. So it's really important about understanding what that kind of looks like for your organisation for the selection stages of any kind of SaaS solution, whether that's HR, payroll, recruitment, learning. Um, having that understanding is really crucial. Uh, so next slide, yeah. Um, 
let's start by taking a step back from the wider business and think about what you want. What are your goals and why are you reviewing systems? If successful in getting your project approved, then this will be your baby and potentially your legacy at that organisation. So what do you see as a vision for success? Um, what will happen if you don't change HR software providers and carry on just as the way you are? You know, we've got lots of people coming to market now who have um, whose system is being discontinued and that's why they're there or it's not meeting them or you've grown loads. Um, it's also about thinking about what that means. So we all want a system that can give employees access to data and holiday booking. But what would that mean for your current processes and employee engagement and, and the wider workflows of the business? So, for example, an easy and more intuitive system means people are more likely to record accurate information, which means better reporting and workflows within the systems, which means more strategic decisions can be made, which means money can be saved for lost time analysis and paying people when you shouldn't. So it's not thinking about the functionality you need, it's about what will that mean for the business and you can keep going on layers of that. So which means that is a fun game to play. Um, now, I should state at this stage that we do work with all types of organisations. Um, oh, I don't know, uh, Catherine, if there's another clip you need to do. Uh, OK, yeah, see. Um, so we all have um, lots of different types of um, organisations. For those where the HR teams can do the research, they can pick it and they can sign off the HR system. So it's lovely breezy. No one else needs to be involved. Um, but we can also work in companies where everybody has to be involved. Um, and I'd love to tell you that X employees in X sector, your process is X, Y, Z. However, that isn't the case. Every company, regardless of size, sector and requirements is unique. So let's start by thinking about the stakeholders you need to engage with at the pre-sales stage. Who are they? Uh, do they do you have an internal projects team, procurement managers? Does your FD want to get involved at the long list or wait until you've shortlisted? Is there budget available? Do you need to ask IT for due diligence at any stage? Will you do a business review with managers on what they want? Um, and what do they want? So the FD and CFO are most likely going to want to know about cost, but they may also want to know about contracts and commercial terms, how it can feed into things like their finance systems. IT may need to discuss deployment, infrastructure, security. Do they have a form you need to complete? What are their needs, likes and musts? Um, and when? When do they need this is key? So often we get to the stage where the HR team is ready, they've got sign on the dot, they think they've done everything to start their implementation, but other parts of the organisation have work they need to do. If you're in contract, have you taken into account renewal dates and contract closure terms with your current vendor? Does your board need to be involved? And if so, when does your board meet? Uh, recently, I was working on a project and everything was ready to go. We'd gone through all the commercials. Everyone was happy. The board had to sign it, but the board only met every three months. And we didn't. We literally just missed that meeting. So we had to wait another three months for the board to meet again. Um, whilst you're reaching out to vendors for demo, make sure you're learning your internal steps at the same time yourself yourself so much hounding from sales reps if you can just give them the timelines up front and say this is what i'm working to there's no point ringing me every week so you will get a copy of this and here are some examples of stakeholders and what they might be interested in and who these people are in your organization so will they need to be involved in your procurement process Doing this work up front will just save you lots of headaches further down the line. Now, thinking outside of requirements, so not the wants and the glitter and the, the jazz of software, but going to market, you need to understand the information that vendors will want to know if you can provide this. Um, it, if you give them this information, it genuinely gives you more leverage. So first, current cost and terms. When is your contract renewal? Most SaaS solutions have an auto renew minimum of one year. So many projects will get delayed if it's left too late and they need to re-sign for another year with their existing provider. You need to think that depending on your size and, and what you're buying from that new system, an implementation can take anything from three to nine months. Um, if you're a large organization, it can even take longer. So depending on what you want to do, this is really important to know about when you're going to have that crossover period and when you need to hand your notice into your current provider. 
but also given how much HR systems can do these days, what other systems you use as a business that you spend money on and you can now merge into one. That will give you an idea of what budgets you can have and knowing your timelines. Um, with that, with the budgets, more often than not, you actually don't get to know this. So we're all always like, oh, do you have a budget in mind? And the response is finance have asked us to research first. So, but just try and know your limits because there's nothing worse than seeing your dream system and it being way over budget, but equally imagine settling for a lesser system because you didn't ask for as much money as you could. Um, if you're clear with vendors on this, and lots of people don't like saying their budgets, even if they do know, because they're worried that we're gonna come in under it or over it, or we're gonna aim for it. The benefit of us knowing, or, or any vendor knowing your budget, is that if we are too expensive, we'll tell you, and we'll save you the heartbreak of seeing an awesome system that you can't afford. Or they'll say, let's see what we can do to make this work. Disclosing your true budget won't make a vendor raise their prices, especially in the current market. Internal procurement steps is a huge one. As HR and not regular buyers, this can be completely new to you. So often we work with companies who think it's just a matter of select and sign off, but actually there might be stages of due diligence and board approval and the FD wants to get involved. So just try and understand these steps and include them in your project timeline and prepare for when people are available or unavailable. So think school holidays might be a hurdle on getting some key decision makers together. There's the due diligence stage. So this is often key for IT and other departments, knowing financial securities and risks. So what's the sign off that your business needs for that? Um, resource, internal resource. Now, depending on your project size, we would recommend two to three man days a week for that an early stage. The data import and cleanse is a huge job, regardless of what system you go with. When is a good time in a business for you to allocate this time? Or do you need to plan for a longer implementation to align with your eternal resource? Think about staff availability in terms of time off, but also other major projects that may be undertaken simultaneously. And your timelines and deadlines. Do your, do your IT have other projects that they must complete before yours? What are your current system contract dates and can you renew for three or six months or is it just the 12 months? When does your board meet to sign off contracts? Do you have budget now or is it the next financial year? If you can know these now, you can save a lot of time and disappointment later. Okay, so you've spoken to everyone, you've got all the information and research complete. Now you need to get your head around what you have, what you want, what you need and what you dream of. So what's for now? Um, what's for a phase two? What's for a phase three? Do you want to implement everything in one go? Um, so you go in the full big bang, you've got the resource available, you've got the budget, you want to get it all done. Or are you going to go for more of a phased approach so that you can kind of engage with people, make sure you streamline and motivate people as you go along. And that's a really big thing to think about is about whether or not you're going to go all in at once or you're going to drip feed and you're just going to buy the core modules and grow it later. The requirements list to begin with should be just a tick box. So when you first engage with people, have a tick box. Can the vendor meet our basic needs and wants? Um, not just your own, though, remember IT's minimum requirements, for example, must be included in here. Um, here are some key thinking points for you. Uh, we know if you haven't been to market for a long time, you don't know what you don't know. And you can speak to the vendor and say that. And actually what you want them to do is just show you what's available um, so you can decide what's what you like, what you don't like. Um, and as vendors, we're more than happy to do that with you. Uh, but just have a top level requirement, you know, is performance included, is um, payroll included, that kind of stuff. Um, and then finally, most vendors you deal with will be able to help you and be keen to let you know if they are the right fit or not. You know, we're not in the interest of bringing on people that we can't meet the needs of, and I can't imagine any other company is as well. So by being open about your timelines, your budgets, your requirements, um, even even who else you're talking to, you can create an easier journey for yourself. One of the things I always think is good to consider here as well is the values and ways of working is a really great one. You represent your employee brand. So why would you work with a company that isn't as aligned? Have you looked at them up as a business and what their employees say? And are they going to be able to provide best practice guidance? You know, are they, you know, we're very fortunate at Cypher, most of us are from an HR background. So we not only love that a system can solve problems, but we've actually had those problems ourselves so we can understand it from both sides. 
that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about when you're talking to people. Do they understand your needs and why you need them? Um, that's an introduction. If anybody does want to have further questions or anything like that with me, just let us know. I think Catherine's got doing some questions at the end as well. Yeah, definitely. There'll be time for questions at the end. Just send them in using the control panel on your screen. Um, and Laurie's now going to take us through implementing your new HR system. There you are, Laurie. Brilliant. <laughs> um, and we're going to start this new segment um, just with a quick kickoff poll again to understand which aspects of implementing HR software are causing you most concern. Um, you can check as many of those as apply to you in your current project and protect perhaps finding the time or resource to dedicate to the project, learning how to use a new HR system, cleansing and importing data, not getting enough support from the vendor um, or possibly something else. So please send in a message if it's, if it's something else that's causing you sleepless nights. Um, so Laurie, in your experience, you've helped lots of clients with their projects. What sorts of things do people generally worry about when faced with implementing a new system? Um, it, it can vary depending on the size of the organization um, and what sector they're in. But um, I think probably one of the most common one that we come across is um, the client not really understanding or knowing what their responsibilities are. So, you know, lots of clients that we work with have never implemented software before. So they've kind of never been down this rodeo, should we say, um, and um, just have no idea of what to expect or, or what responsibilities that they will have their side. Um, and hopefully going through this, um, this, this, this webinar today, um, we'll be able to give you some really useful hints and tips um, of what to think about when implementing, when implementing software. Okay, thanks so much. I'm just going to share the results now. Some really interesting ones here. So three quarters of you are concerned about finding the time or resource to dedicate to the project. And that's always a perennial concern when you've got so many um, competing activities within, um, within the, in the organisation. Um, two thirds of you are concerned about cleansing and importing data. Like That's a really big project to get through in itself, like a mini project as part of implementation, mm -hmm. particularly if you're moving from one system to the other, but also if you've got um, disparate records on like spreadsheets or Word documents, then that's a big task to gather all that to together. And then around another third of you are concerned about learning to use a new HR system or not getting enough support from the vendor. Um, and that kind of support side is definitely uh, something that we're going to talk you through now. So I'm going to hand over to Laurie now. Cool. There you go. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Katie. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm now going to talk through um, Cypher's approach to implementing our solutions. Um, so over the past 12 to 18 months, we've been working really hard to streamline and standardize how we implement our products to help all of our customers get the most out of their Cypher implementations. So this is just a high level overview of the stages that you would go through in a typical Cypher HR implementation. We've broken it down into nine stages, um, and these stages are, are, are displayed on the screen. Um, so I'll quickly do a high level run through of these nine stages. So firstly, we start at the welcome stage. So this is where we welcome you um, to the project and implementation team, and we agree when we'll start your project with a kickoff meeting. Secondly, at the kickoff stage, um, your kickoff meeting will be led by your Cypher project manager and will agree the scope of your project and understand your key requirements and agree our approach to delivering your project. So once we've passed that stage, we'll move on to setting up your customer hub. The hub will provide you with access to everything you need for a successful project, including where you can access your project plan, project status reports, raid logs and consultancy reports, which all kept in one place for you to access. Next, your consultant will then work with you to agree the specification of your Cypher system and the data that we will be importing into it. Once we've agreed the spec, we will begin the data import and configuration stage of your project. Once your data is in, you'll help us to test that configuration and approve it. Stage six is time for additional configuration. So this is for any additional modules that you may have purchased above our standard uh, Cypher suite. Once the scope of the project has been delivered and implemented, it's now time for the approval stage of the project. And this is where your project manager will start planning your transition into business as usual. So at stage eight, we hand over to business as usual 
and we will close the project with a project closure meeting. And the final stage is with implementation complete, your Cypher Success Account Manager and our customer care team will then be on hand to continue to help you get the most out of your Cypher system. So if we move on to the next stage, <clears throat> what I want to look at here is just go into a little bit more detail at those various stages um, of a typical HR implementation. So phase one, which you can see on the screen, um, that consists of the first five stages of our implementation process that we just looked at on the previous slide. So from the welcome stage all the way through to the import and implement your base configuration. So by the end of phase one, you'll be able to use your new Cypher HR system to administer your people data. Your HR team will be trained on how to use Cypher HR and you'll be live with your system for your HR users. And just to give you a bit of understanding of time frame, that phase there or phase one, those first five stages of our process, typically, um, depending on you know the resource that you have available, et cetera, but for most clients is around an eight to 10 week uh, phase. So then if we move on to phase two, this is where we will support you with rolling out your employee and manager self-service as well as other things like your reporting and analytic functionality for HR users, um, setting up sharing your HR payroll data, so we can get that sent across to your, your payroll provider or the software that you use, um, and configure and launch any other priority modules that you might have agreed at the kickoff stage. At the end of this phase, your people in your organization will be able to manage their data themselves, on your Cypher HR system and you can start and building custom reports and start reporting on your data. So that's stage two or phase two and then we'll move on to subsequent phases and subsequent phases will roll out other modules and, function and functionality um, which is in scope of your project um, such as those that are shown on the screen so other modules such as onboarding or talent management and these, this, these phases will allow you to gain the benefits from our other functionality in the priority order that you need. So if we go to the next slide, so I now want to talk a little bit about the support that you will receive here while in implementation. So I know that this all might seem a bit daunting if you've never done this before, um, but Cypher offers our customers plenty of support along the way. So firstly, you'll be supported by our consultancy team. So we're an experienced HR implementation team who are all HR professionals with a wealth of HR knowledge um, across a range of different sectors. You'll have a lead HR consultant who will work with you on phase one of your project. Plus, you will have support from our specialist consultants for specialist modules. So things like when we're implementing talent management or if we're doing payroll integration, we have specialist consultants that will work with you on that. Um, <clears throat> you'll benefit from regular support sessions with your consultants, as well as having comprehensive reports from every session that we do, um, which will detail any actions, any recommendations. We will also provide you with lots of supporting documentation at the appropriate stages of the project, along with checklists to help, sure, to help ensure that you're on track uh, and fully supported throughout the various stages of your project. So another bit of support that you'll get from Cypher is our project management. So you'll be supported by our experienced project management team. Um, they have managed projects of all shapes and sizes and complexities and in different sectors, and they bring a wealth of knowledge uh, to your implementation. Um, you will have a dedicated project manager who will work collaboratively uh, with you and internally here at Cypher to ensure that all of Cypher's resources are scheduled and delivered to keep you on track of your project. You will have regular project catch up calls with them where they will have send you regular status reports as well as fully managed project plans that you can access in your customer hub. This dedicated point of contact will uh, provide you with a consistent relationship throughout your implementation journey. They will help you and they will manage any risks, any actions, any issues and any decisions, so RAID, um, as well as any change requests and help you manage cost budget and timelines. So 
continuing on the support that you receive when working with Cypher and implementation, um, we're delighted um, to be relaunching um, what we call Cypher Academy this year. So this is our learning platform just for Cypher customers. It now features a new learning journey that supports our customers through implementation and provides a comprehensive introduction into Cypher's HR product. The HR implementation journey has been designed to enable our learners to build the knowledge and skills that they require to confidently implement Cypher's HR product. Its content has been carefully created to ensure that our learners receive a structured and engaging experience, which we have utilized a variety of different learning content types. So we've got things such as interactive e-learning modules, um, scenario-based learning, um, complemented by system simulation, so where you actually go in and mimic Cypher and you, you do testing. Bite-sized videos, there's lots of videos on there demonstrating functionality. Um, lots and lots and lots of user guides for all of Cypher's functionality on how things work and how you configure them. And then bite-sized classes, so things like this, webinars or classes where you can jump on with one of our experienced trainer and they can talk you through specific bits of functionality. So if we move on, yeah. So this is how um, <clears throat> you'll see on this slide here, we have, um, this is what our implementation learning journey will look like. So we've designed three levels and as you can see, they slot in to our implementation process. Um, so the three levels, we've got level one, which is system foundations, which happens quite early on in the project, as you can see, just after the kind of kickoff stage. Um, and this is an introduction which will help you understand the basics of Cypher how you kind of log in, how you navigate and move around the system and get you familiar with that. Then as we move on through the project, as we start to then spec your system, we'll then have level two. And during this level, you'll become familiar with the configuration options required to successfully set up your system. And then a little bit later on, once we've imported your data into the system, um, you will then go on our level three system familiarization level. And this is where it will teach your HR users um, how to use the system to basically complete their day-to-day -day activities, such as setting up new starters, processing levers, updating employee records. So each of these stages we've carefully designed to complement your implementation to ensure that you're getting the correct training at the appropriate stage of your project. So we're feeding in the training at the right stages. So it's all relevant. Um, and yeah, to help make sure that you're ready for each step of our implementation process. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Thank you. So that's all the support that we will deliver as part of implementation and projects. Um, so some of the key things, um, key tasks and considerations. Um, so we offer our clients a huge amount of support, um, but there are a number of key things and tasks that our customers need to consider too. So let's have a quick look at the tasks that you'll need to to complete. So attending consultancies, pretty much a given. Um, we need to make sure that the correct people are attending them. You'll need to approve specification documentation. So that's one of the key uh, stages of our implementation, um, approving the specs that we're writing. Collate and populate your data. Um, so this is one of the biggies. Um, this stage may take quite some time as well, you know, especially if your data is held in multiple places or you're not quite sure if it's accurate um, however in my view it's one of the most important stages of the project um, so I always would recommend that you take your time and give it the focus that it's needed meeting agree deadlines so as part of the project and part of the project plan there'll be lots of deadlines that we need to meet you know providing your data on this date at this time etc um, completing the academy learning journeys that we just went through Complete any actions that come out of consultancies, again, which will all be documented on our reports and shared in your customer hub. And then working with us to user acceptance test. You know, we'll, we'll provide lots of sort of scripts of things that you should be testing and recommendations of areas of functionality you should be testing and making sure that you're happy with how everything is working during implementation so we can support you on that. So after the task, that now brings us some things to consider when implementing a new HR software. Um, <clears throat> this is quite relevant for some of the poll, but do you have someone with dedicated time to collate and 
to collate, populate your data. You know, it's one of the biggest stages of the project and you definitely need to consider making sure you've got the resource there. Do you have resource dedicated uh, to configure and test the system? Um, I think it's vital um, to invest the time and energy at this stage. Do you have subject matter experts um, who can support you with implementing specialist, modget, mod, uh, specialist modules, sorry, um, such as you know, talent management? Do you have an L&D team that you need to get involved at that stage of the project? Who will be your super users? You know, who, who, who will we direct? Who will we be working with? Who will you direct end users to? Who will be the super users in the system? Um, you know, you'll have your Cypher project manager um, but you may want somebody internally to act as a project manager, especially if you've got multiple different teams your side involved in the implementation. And, you know, ultimately, I think, you know, an implementation process is not to be entered into lightly. You know, take it seriously, implement your system carefully and thoroughly, and I strongly believe that you will have a system set up that you could then use for many, many years. So, you've invested a lot of time and effort from procurement through to selecting your chosen supplier and then the implementation. Um, and we want to engage with your employees. And here's kind of a few hints and tips from me on how to engage your employees with the new system. Firstly, my biggest tip is, you know, making sure that we get managers and employees involved. Um, and here's a few ways that I think we could do that. So I think establish a communication plan. There's nothing wrong in my eyes with over communicating. Sell the benefits what's in it for them for example for employees they will now be able to submit time off requests via the system or they could do it from their mobile while sat on their you know watching tv at home they have access to their employment documents such as contracts or salary review letters and you know they can update personal information 24 7. for managers it could be that they now have access to reports and no longer need to ask hr for this information they have the ability to self-serve and get this data instantly you could also run a competition, um, encouraging employees to name the system, create a poll um, to the business once you've narrowed it down. Um, you could even possibly offer a prize to the winner. Communicate well ahead of launch um, and involve employees in your testing and your pilot groups. You know, use different groups with different needs so that you're comfortable as part of that testing that you've set up and you've catered the system for everybody. Absolutely, you're going to want to schedule and conduct user specific training for employees, for managers. And personally, I'd consider a phased rollout. So I believe that this kind of helps with adoption, um, not to overwhelm your people with too much functionality at once, especially if you know, you're not used to using a system or you haven't used a HR system before. Communicate any actions that you would like employees to complete in the system. Um, for example, it's quite common that when we come to implement it, clients are not quite sure if um, equality and diversity information is accurate or up to date, or if next of kin or emergency contact details are accurate. So these are all things that you can ask your employees to do when you roll out the system to get them engaged with using it. Um, and my final tip would be to choose a quiet day to launch the system which will then give managers and employees time to engage with it. Don't launch it when it's very busy or, you know, the, the, there's lots going on around the business. Pick a quieter day. It's more likely that they'll spend the time then having a look in the system and starting to use it. So, yeah, thank you, everybody. That's it from me. Um, I hope that that was useful. And um, good luck for those that are going to be uh, heading on an implementation journey soon. Thanks so much, Laurie. Um, lots of really good, useful tips and knowledge in there. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just going to run through some quick recaps of what we've covered so far today before we dive into our questions and answers. So if you do have questions, please send them in using the control panel on the screen now and we'll tackle those in just a moment. Um, so starting with selection that Katie shared with us, define your stakeholders. Do you know what they want, why and when they want them? What needs to happen for your new HR software to be considered a success? These criteria will help you decide which solution is the right fit for you and will help you deliver your goals. Get your house in order before assessing the market as far as possible. You need to know your budget, your procurement process, your timescales, and how much resource you'll have available to commit to this project. And this project is two phases, it's selection and implementation, so the resourcing requirements on each side might be slightly different. 
What are your essentials and what are your luxuries? What functionality must you replicate in a new system? And what processes could you improve with a new system that they aren't business critical? One system is unlikely to do everything you need it to, so you have to hone in on your priorities in order to make the right decision. Be clear with vendors about your objective, budget and appetite for change. The more honest you are with vendors, the better they can meet your needs and understand if their product's going to be the right fit. When it comes to implementation, every vendor will do it slightly differently, but today we've talked you through our new nine stage implementation plan, which guides and supports you through every single step of the process. Phase one typically launches your central HR system to HR administrators and users. And then in phase two, we open up access to employees and managers. Cypher offers support throughout implementation through our consultancy team, project managers, and our digital learning platform, Cypher Academy. When choosing a system vendor, ask them how they will support you through implementation and beyond business as usual. Is their offering comprehensive? Vendor support is especially critical if you haven't been part of an HR implementation project before. Remember, implementation sets you up for future success. You need to take implementation seriously and dedicate adequate internal resources to get your new HR system up and running. Get it right and it will enable your HR team and organization to work smarter and achieve its goals. Get it wrong and not only will you struggle, but you won't get the return on investment you desire. Okay, with that, I'd like to welcome Katie and Laura. Oh, you're all there, brilliant, I couldn't see you for a moment. Um, <laughs> it's time to tackle some of the questions that have come in. Um, so we've had a question from Kim Laurie about the, um, the the, the, the um, documents that are made available in the Cypher Customer Hub. Can you tell us a little bit about what's in there, what kind of format they are in? She specifically asked if, it, if you're using MS Project. So yeah, our project managers use uh, Microsoft Projects. So your project plan will be on uh, MS Projects um, and they will also export that in different formats for you if you want it, PDF, Excel, things like that. Um, and then yeah, also in there is other documents such as lots of PDFs, right, from consultancy reports, things like that, um, responsibility documents, um, agendas, which are also attached to you know every single one of our consultancies uh, invites. So we do it by Microsoft Teams, um, and you'll get agendas for every single consultancy, along with who we recommend should attend that consultancy, any pre-work that you need to do before that consultancy. Um, but we store it all centrally so that you've got it all. Um, in one place as well, which is in the customer hub. Hope that answers that. Excellent. Yeah, I hope so. Um, Katie, a question for you. Like we talked primarily about working with clients in the UK, but does Cypher work with companies outside the UK and a bit more globally? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll work with customers who have a global reach. We are a SaaS-based solution, so you can use us anywhere in the world. However, it's probably worthy of note here that at this stage, Cypher is kind of UK centric in our implementation. We're all UK based, so we would generally work with a UK based HR team, but we can work with customers who then have global reaches and rollouts as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, if another question we've had here is about uh, GDPR. If, if any of you'd like to just talk a little bit about um, our readiness to support GDPR both through the project, uh, through the product and also through the company as a whole. And Katie, that might be a good one to yeah. start with you. Um, so Absolutely. It, data protection is, is what we live and breathe. Um, so within Cypher itself, we are, have all the accreditations you could think of. So like Cyber Essentials Plus accreditation, or ISO 27001 accredited. Um, there's actually a data retention dashboard. So the system will be built around your data retention policy to know what needs to be deleted, anonymized, renewed. And that's a really important part of the journey and, and your training with us in, in building the system. Um, so it's your data policies built within the system to, to send you the triggers. It won't delete your data without your approval. Um, but as a company, we've got all that, you know, in fact, probably the best piece of mind we can normally give is that the ICO are our customer. So you can imagine the hoops we had to jump through there to, to get that approval. And that's rolled out to all our customers. And um, the data centres we use, they're based in the UK too, is that right? Yeah, yeah. one in Manchester, one in uh, Hemel Hempstead, so over 180 miles apart, feeding into each other. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Laurie, anything to add on the GDPR aspect, or is that kind of all covered? Yeah, Katie covered it really well, but from an uh, employee perspective, just a bit of functionality we have in Cypher as well. So if an employee asks for uh, subject access requests, things like that, um, they can do that from the system. Um, and the system will help you collate all of that so that you can share it with your employees. 
Awesome, thank you. Um, Katie, another question for you. Uh, Debbie asked if we work with many schools, and I know we have great representation in that sector, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that for me. Yeah, so I'm actually one of the school specialists at, um, at Cyber. Uh, it's actually probably probably one of our biggest sectors, and that's because of the things we can do to support single central registers and safeguarding checks. Um, we can manage multiple posts, and there's term time only things that we can support you with as well. So if you are a school, absolutely get in touch with us. Um, we're very fortunate that the schools tend to be quite chatty and make lots of recommendations towards us. And, and sorry, from like a, if we're talking about a, a school as a client, are there any considerations from like implementation perspectives around like terms and holiday working that kind of side? Yeah, so most schools want to be implementing, well, the HR team's most available resource will tend to be July and August. So it's just keeping that in mind, if that's your goal date, that can be a really busy time um, for us because everybody wants that time uh, available. It's always great as well if you think actually planning on launching in September. So we can, as part of an inset day, provide some videos and content for you to launch it. Um, you get the flexibility as well. So you might have like um, the support working staff versus the academic staff might have different journeys that we can support there but from an implementation perspective it's very much about understanding your budgets your timelines and your resource um, as with anybody but yours are slightly skewed in that obviously you have your summer holidays and your budgets can often be from uh, September to August. Okay great thank you um, another question for you Katie and um, just ask if there's a minimum company size that I could tend to work with. Uh, our customers start at 40 employees and go up to 31,000. However, it's probably worthy of note that, that kind of under 125 um, employees, we we wouldn't go into that area. We're not, well, we can if you've got the budget, but we're, there's much more uh, plug and play systems that tend to be a better suit for you guys. Um, kind of 250 and above is where you get the, you know, the, the real good return of investment of a highly configurable system. Unless you're a business with really complex needs and you absolutely need to be going for a configurable mid market system like Cypher. Okay, and talking of um, complex needs, a question from Mark. He says the fire service has multiple complex work patterns and some individuals have more than one role and set of managers. Is something that the Cypher product can help with? Yeah, absolutely. We've got multiple post, post, post functionality within Cypher. So I could be an employee, I can be a cleaner and a caterer. I have one profile, but I have two managers who will only ever see data related to the job role I'm, they support me in. Um, there can be split out for your reporting purposes. Um, and yeah, you can build as many different um, work patterns or terms and conditions in the system and you just apply it to the people and the posts. Amazing. Thanks so much. Um, I think that kind of covers all of our questions. Um, Katie, if, there, if our audience would take one point away from today when it comes to selecting a new HR system, what would you, what is that for you? Uh, it, it can be exciting. Um, so whilst we've probably scared you a lot today with resource and know this and know that, um, this is exciting. You are going to be launching a system that's going to be built around what you want and your journey. Um, so. So just remember the end goal um, through all the administration work because a new system can be so much fun. And, and if you do want to set up a session with us to have a look at it, we'll actually kind of show you what that can look and feel like as well. Amazing, yeah, thank you. Have where you can. Yeah, and Laurie, same question for you, but on the implementation side. Um, mine's a bit that Kate said scaring everybody, but it's... Uh, <laughs> It's probably just the considerations that I spoke about, you know, the things to consider um, as you head onto this journey, make sure you've got the right resource and, and just taking the time, you know, don't rush it. You know, I, I hate it when customers really want to rush it through and I feel that sometimes they've not fully utilized it or got the most out of the system. So um, take your time, um, put the resource in and, and absolutely be very, very successful. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, and that brings us to the end of our session today. Um, if you were watching live, this recording will be emailed to you and um, so you can go back and review it anytime you like or to share it with some of your colleagues. If you'd like to learn more about Cypher Solutions, you can opt in using the exit form that you'll see on the screen after the broadcast. That's, that form also invites you to share a bit of feedback about today's um, webinar, which we always really appreciate you, um, you filling in for us. Uh, our next webinar, should you be interested, is on a, the tax year end legislative update in regards to payroll. So our payroll sales specialist will be taking you through everything you need to know for the new tax year. That's on Thursday, the 9th of March at 11 a.m. You can register at bit.ly slash cypher payroll 23. So all that remains for me to say is thank you so much, Katie and Nori, for joining me today and sharing your expertise. Really appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone today has really found it useful. 
Um, and we hope to see you on another FIFA webinar again soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Laurie. Bye. 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 Bye.